Angelo was arrested. It's estimated more than 150 violent cold case suspects have been identified using the same genealogy DNA technique pioneered by investigators in the East Area Rapist case. The technology wasn't new, but CBS 13 investigative reporter Julie Watts explains why this case opened the door really for genealogy crime fighting nationwide. We haven't slept all night in almost 20 years. Carol Roberts' daughter Tracy and her friend JB were found dead at 17 in the trunk of their car. The case went cold until decades later when the Ozarks police chief was inspired by the genealogy DNA detective work at the Sacramento DA's office. When the Golden State Killer got caught, I just thought that why not try to apply that to this case. And he's not alone. Citing the Golden State Killer case, law enforcement agencies across the country are turning to investigative genetic genealogy. Eight-year-old Kelly Prosser, Idaho's Angie Dodd, elementary school teacher Christy Merrick, Anna Hlavka, Clifford and Linda Bernhardt, just some of the estimated 150 cold cases recently cracked, many with the help of one company. Sheriff's Office enlisted the services Parabon Nano Lab. A company called Parabon. Parabon says they've now helped identify 116 violent criminals using the same method as the Sacramento DA, developing a genetic profile to create a family tree, then uploading that to a public genealogy database like GEDmatch and compiling a list of people who share DNA with the suspect. We originally had it narrowed down to about six men, but it turned out there was a seventh. But Parabon's chief genetic genealogist, CeCe Moore, explains you can't convict on their DNA evidence alone. Law enforcement has to take that tip and then go and build their traditional forensic case against this person. And she says they wouldn't be offering investigative genealogy at all if it weren't for the SAC DA. The DNA is the silent witness to the truth. You see, before the Golden State Killer, Parabon did offer genetic services to law enforcement and genealogy services to people looking for relatives. But they had ethical concerns about combining the two and using DNA submitted for genealogy to find criminals because people submitting samples back then didn't realize they could be used by law enforcement. GEDmatch has since changed its policy, requiring people to opt in to share their DNA. And as a result, the total number of samples dropped from over a million before D'Angelo to about 260,000 today. Samples that are crucial for at least 150 families so far who, like Carol, hope genealogy leads to justice. All I've ever wanted to do was stand in front of someone one day and ask them why. Julie adds, family tree DNA is now also sharing, offering a law enforcement services, increasing the pool of potential matches. But MyHeritage, 23andMe, and Ancestry say they do not allow law enforcement access right now.